The goblins are small creatures who dwell in the dark corners of Tyria, making homes where big folk don't care to go. They rely on numbers and trickery to defeat more powerful opponents. Goblins have long sought to carve out a place amongst the people of Tyria, only to be either ignored or treated as pests by the other species. The Havoc Wars forced the tribes to unite, and briefly saw them treated with respect by the Grand Alliance, but this respect quickly faded, and now the goblins once more struggle to find their place amongst the big folk. Hey guys, before we start talking about goblins, I want to talk to you about how OPR has not actually released any models for these yet. So, we're going to have to go somewhere else to find them. And I've had a ton of people in the past ask me where I get my files for all the ridiculous stuff that I make. We're not sponsored, but I'm going to tell you guys anyways. The place I go to look for files is a website called Yeggy. Y-E-G-G-I dot com. And there you're going to have, you're going to be able to use any words to search for what you want. Here on the screen, I flashed up the screenshot of me looking for a goblin army, and this is the first page of all the different stuff that comes up. Now, it doesn't matter what you want to look for. You go to Yegi, and it, it's an aggregate search, kind of like a Google for STL files. You can search for anything you want. If it exists, it's probably going to be here. All right, with that out of the way, moving on. So, goblin special rules. Goblins. It's something an orc knows an awful lot about. We abuse them, we kick them, but occasionally they're worth something. So let's start going over some special rules. So at the top, boing. When this model is activated, you may place it anywhere within D3 plus one inches. This is like a teleport. You're going to see it on a lot of your cave beasts because they are just bouncing up and down and everywhere. Real easy to be able to launch yourself over some terrain because you don't need to see where you're heading. You just kind of bounce and land there. Good for going over walls or possibly jumping over the top of enemy units if you get a good enough boing roll. Bombing run. Whenever this model moves over an enemy unit, pick one of them and roll dice for each two plus. It takes three hits with AP one. I know it's on the pump plane. I'm not sure if it's on anything else. We'll figure out as we go through. Camouflage. This model and its units get stealth. Destructive. This model may move through enemy units. Whenever it does, pick one of them and roll one die. On a two plus, it takes three hits with AP one. These are going to be for our fanatics, our little whirling dervishes of destruction. We'll go over them some more when we get there. Instigator, this is one of your leader rules. Once per activation, before attacking, pick one other friendly unit within 12, which may move by up to 6. So it's just a more of a mobility skill, being able to get you to form a battle line or launch something into things or pull stuff back as you see fit. Magic Potions. This model and its unit gets AP plus one in melee. Again, another leader option. These are great. It's probably going to be the only way you get AP on your foot troops. Power Shrooms. Once per activation, pick one friendly unit within six inches, which gets plus one to hit next time it fights in melee. Power Shrooms are going to be on the... What are they called in this army? They're going to be on the... They're going to be on the Shroom Sniffers. Possibly one of the best buffs in the game you just have some shroom sniffers running behind your units and throwing out you get to hit you get to hit everybody gets to hit surprise attack this model counts as having ambush and may be deployed up to one inch away from enemy units once deployed roll x dice for each two plus one enemy unit within three inches takes two hits with ap1 so this is going to be a assassins type unit they're just going to pop up and oh guess what we've already hit you take down once per game when this model attacks in melee, you may pick one model in the unit as its target and make one attack at quality 2 with AP 1 and deadly 3, which is resolved as if it is a unit of 1. This is going to be a way for your characters, This is, again, this is a character skill, a way for your characters to walk into an enemy unit, point at the enemy character, and punch him in the mouth. Warning cry, enemy units can't be set up within 12 inches of this model when using ambush. That is what it says. As far as the spells, let's see here. Glare, one, target enemy units within nine, takes one hit with AP two and deadly three. Spider's Might, target friendly units within 18, get poison next time they fight in melee. Death Shroud, target enemy units within 12, takes four hits with AP two. Nuisance, target two friendly units within 12 to get plus one to defense rolls next time they take hits. Curse, target enemy units within 18, takes one hit with blast of nine. Sneaky, target two friendly units within 12, get plus three next time they advance, or plus six next time they rush or charge. 
So for the spells, you're going to be wanting to use the offensive spells. That nuisance, uh, friendly units within 12 get plus one to defense rolls. You might be able to cast that on some trolls or some beast riders, which would be the only real significant target for that. Everything else in this army, I don't know if you guys realize this. Well, I haven't gone through it yet, but I'll just tell you right now. Goblins suck. <laughs> Individual goblins are terrible. But you get a lot of them. So that is the name of the game here. Is we're putting a lot of little green stinky bodies on the field and telling people just to deal with it. So as we go through, I'm going to put up different pictures of different creators that you can find on that Yegi website just to... Throw some stuff up there for you guys to look at, because OPR doesn't have any of these. And then I'll show you at the end, my army goes completely separate direction from this, just because I thought it was funny, and goblins are funny. So, let's start at the bottom of the bottom, the most useless of useless, Goblin Warriors. You get 10 of them for 55 points. If that doesn't tell you these guys are cheap and crap, I don't know what else will. Quality of 5 with defense of 6. They all come with one attack standard. You can replace their hand weapons with halberds or spears. Spears might be the way to go because other stuff is going to charge you probably more than you're going to charge it. Well, that's up to you. You might want to have rending goblins. Honestly, at this point, for 55 points, it's a wash. You can put whatever you want on these. Then we're going to get down to the clans. You have the clave clan, the forest clan, or the wolf clan. You can break that down to squigs, spiders, or wolves. In the different type of clans, give you different rules. Clave clan gives you furious, where if you charge, it's an extra hit on a six. Forest clan gives you strider, where you don't care about terrain. As long as it's not impassable, you can move right through it. The wolf clan gives you fearless. And with a quality of five, oh man, that just pretty much nearly triples your ability to take a hit. And then you can upgrade up to three models with sergeant, which gives one of the goblins plus one to hit. A musician, which means that your unit can move an extra inch, or a banner, you count as plus one on your morale rolls. And even then, it still only gets you to a 50-50. Cave Beast Herds. Now on the screen here, you can see that we got cave beasts that are made out of frogs. So five of them for 60 points. Quality five, defense of five. Two attacks apiece with rending, with the boing skill. And then their only option is to take a goblin herder, which gives them fearless and furious. So for... 65 points, you can get Fearless, Furious, Rending, Teleporting, little angry balls of fun to throw at the enemy. Are they going to do great? No, but it's going to be funny. Shroom Sniffers. Five of them for 55 points. Quality five, defense six, one attack apiece with poison. Furious with power shrooms. These are the guys that are going to give your units plus one to hit. It, it, it behooves you to have one of these follow behind every one of your combat units. For 55 points, you increase the output of your units by a flat 18%. Worth it. There's really not much more to say about that. If you want to actually do something in a game, have these guys following around your goblins, handing out the good good. Pester Swarms, little snotlings. I wasn't able to find like a round base with them, but these pictures here, just take all those guys, stick them on a single round base. There you go. There's your pester swarms. Three of them for 45 points, quality six, defensive six, three swarm attacks or three attacks apiece, scout strider, toughness three. Man, I get surprised by how cheap these things are. 45 points for three swarm bases. God, that's just at 1,500 points like we're playing today. That's just throwing around money. That's walk around money. For a 1500 point army. But quality six, defensive six, like all the other swarms I've gone over in the past, don't expect these guys to do a darned thing. No upgrades, because, I mean, they're snotlings. What are you going to upgrade them with? Toothpicks? They're just running around biting things in the ankles. Nasty Assassins, three of them for 80 points. Quality five, defensive six, three dual hand weapons for two attacks apiece. Strider, surprise attack one, and takedown. So the surprise attack we talked at the beginning, they're going to get to roll one dice on that as they pop out of assault and gank somebody. They only have a defense of six, so these guys are going to be a glass cannon. Pop up, stab something, and then expect them to die immediately. And then the, the pictures of the guys I have going on here. These look very Labyrinth David Bowie style goblins, which if you want to go for it, that's a choice. There would be a fun Muppet army to run. Fanatics are little meat missiles. The whirling dervishes of destruction. 
Three of them for 195 points. You're going to be spending a lot of points for these guys. Quality five and defensive six. Three balls and chains for one attack at AP1. Boeing, destructive, and tough three. So they're tough little buggers, but they only have a defensive six, so anything's got to look at them hard, and uh, they're going to go down. But with the Boeing and destructive, they have the ability to kind of teleport around, and they're just going to move right through the enemy, smashing through as they go. Fanatics are good, but pretty pricey as far as the points cost. If, they had, if there was an ability to hide these inside a regular unit of Goblin Warriors, it'd be amazing. Like if they had an ambush rule that they popped up within one inch of a Goblin Warrior unit. Oh, it'd be perfect, but they don't. They have to kind of march along with your battle line. That just leaves them open to get shot. And with defensive six, it doesn't take much to put them down. Trolls, three of them for 155 points. Quality four, defensive four, three heavy hand weapons for three attacks apiece at AP1. Regeneration and toughness three. Now, Artisan Guild here, that little, I put the name on the screen, but that little thing in the bottom right stands for Artisan Guild, which I don't know how many times I've shown people these pictures and they're like, what does that mean, Artisan Guild? Upgrades, replace the heavy hand weapons with heavy great weapons for AP3. Or you get them to throw rocks at the enemy for three attacks, AP1, at a 12-inch range. And then you can give them different breeds. The cave breed gives them poison and melee and furious. Forest breed, which are scout and strider. Stone breed, which is fearless and defensive one. It's going to be whatever flavor you want to have with these trolls. Now, as far as compared to the rest of the army, trolls are going to be a real damage dealer for you. Because they can actually hit stuff and hit it hard compared to your little goblins with sticks in the back. So it will be flavor to taste, whichever one you want. Stone breed will be your tankier trolls. Forest breed is your faster trolls. And cave breed will be your middle of the road rage type trolls with furious and poison. Shooters, because your goblins with sticks are going to die. So you might as well have some goblins that sling sticks from over there. Five of them for 45 points. Quality five, defensive six. Five hand weapons for one attack apiece. Five short bows. For one attack at 18 inches. You can give them all crossbows for a 24 inch one shot rending. And with quality 5, they're pretty much standard for everybody else's basic shooting troops. Quite honestly, it might be better to take these guys over top of like a, a, a melee unit. Because these guys are going to be able to attack unanswered with their bows over somebody attacking them in close combat. And with the quality of 5, you're going to fail a morale test. So I'd rather shoot stuff as it was coming in with these goblins, because then they're not just going to take off running. But that's not saying don't have spear goblins. You're going to have the points, you're going to have spears, you're going to have sticks, you're going to have bows, you're going to have guys on angry meatballs, spiders. You're going to have a ton of stuff because everything is so cheap. So now you can also upgrade these with the Clave Clan, Forest Clan, and Wolf Clan. In this situation, Clave Clan is useless. Because you're not going to be charging in your, your archers. And if you are, things have gone so far down the whoop scale that you're just going to... Don't worry about it. Uh, Strider to run away to get to better shooting spots. Or Fearless, in case something really does hit you, are probably going to be the better choice. Or just leave the upgrades for the clan off them entirely. They're there to shoot little tiny sticks and people with bigger sticks. And you can give them the upgrade for Sergeant, Musician, and Banner. Again, the only thing I'd really give them possibly is the Musician to get to position a little bit faster. Beast Riders, here's where some fun stuff comes in. Five of them for 40 points. Again, cheap, cheap, cheap to start off with. Quality five, defensive five, one attack piece with fast. You can replace the hand weapons with lances, which if you're gonna take Beast Riders, give them lances. Oh my God, give them lances. You can also give them short bows in addition to give an 18-inch one-shot attack. And then, again, we're going to go down here to the clan option. You can put them on a spider, which gives them strider, and a toxic fang, which gives them one poison attack. A cave beast, which gives them boing, which is the teleport ability, furious, and one rending attack with the vicious jaw. Or put them on a wolf, which makes them fearless, with one AP1 attack. And then I cut it off a little bit at the bottom, but the options are Sergeant, Musician, and Standard, like all the other units. These guys are where the fun is going to be. I don't know, having little having little useless goblins bouncing around on angry meatballs. That's why I love goblins, because they're just so, so ridiculous. And the, the ones I put up on screen here are very, very angry, dangerous-looking meatballs. 
Giant Cave Beast. I don't even know how to explain the thing I got on the screen here, but someone said, hey, that works. So it does. It's like a pig, half moon, angry tomato. I, I don't know. But Giant Cave Beast, quality 4 and defensive 3 with Giant Jaw for 8 attacks with rending and 4 stomp attacks at AP1. Has Boing, Fear 2, Toughness 12. This thing has no, this thing has no upgrades on its own. It is a ball of angry meat to throw at the enemy. <laughs> There's nothing much more to say about that. It, it, is, it is a fire and forget, go over there and cause some damage kind of thing. Man, goblins are stupid. I love it. Giant Spider, quality four and defensive three. Uh, comes with a short bow crew, 18 inches, six attacks. Stomp for four attacks, AP one, and Toxic Fang for six attacks with poison. Fear 2, Strider, and Tough 12. For the upgrade, you can replace the Shortbow Crew with a Spider Shrine, which gives this thing the ability to cast spells, or a Web Catapult for 24 A2 Blast 3 Indirect. And then you can replace the Toxic Fangs with a Giant Stinger for 1 attack at AP2 and Deadly 3 with Fangs for 4 attacks of Poison. Now, I'm not really the Spider Goblin guy, but I can see the, I can see the utility of this. It's having a Striding giant spider tearing through stuff if it was me i would take off the short bow crew and put on the caster just because that spider is moving forward it's going to try to get into combat and you can't shoot or use a web catapult in close combat but i could be wrong like i said i'm not the spider guy i'm the i'm the angry meatball guy troll giant I couldn't find a singular troll, but you could just take one of these guys and scale them up. I mean, you guys know what you're doing here. Troll Giant, quality 4, defensive 3, giant club, 6 attacks, AP 2, stomp A4, AP 1, with fear 2, regeneration, and toughness 12. You can replace his club with a hammer, which gives his attacks deadly 3, or you can give him the ability to throw a boulder, which will be a blast attack, 2 attacks, blast 3, AP 1, and then you can give him the different breeds here, the cave breed, forest breed, or stone breed. With this guy with toughness 12, regeneration, I would probably say stone breed. Run him forward to smash into stuff and just, you're not gonna, you're not gonna take him out too easy. At that point, it'd be toughness 12 with defensive 2, with regeneration on top of that. And then if somehow you do break him down, he's got quality 4 with a fearless, which will be a 50-50. He's not gonna run away. You're gonna be tanky as hell. Wolf Chariots, one of them for 115 points. Quality 5, defensive 3, you get 2 bites from the wolves at AP 1, and 2 attacks with the spear crew, then have a lance. Fast, fearless, impact 4, and toughness 6, and you could upgrade them, you can remove the spear and put the short bow crew in there for 18 inches, 6 shots. Uh, again, whether you want to have this guy running around outside of the enemy charge range, blasting him with arrows, or charging straight ahead and trying to knock people over with the lances, that one's up to you. There is no wrong way to play a goblin because the goblin has no idea what he's doing in the first place. Pump Wagons, quality 5, defensive 3, 2 attacks with the crew, 2 attacks with a roller at AP 1, Boeing Fear 1, Impact 4, and Toughness 6. And you can upgrade it with throwing weapons for the crew, 12 inches for 6 attacks for 10 points. Really looking at this unit for the first time. 110 points, 4 impact to hits, toughness 6, defensive 3. Sure, this is going to be something that runs in there and clogs up your enemy's army. Run it forward, they might not be able to deal with defensive 3. Why not? Slam into something. You're a snotling. What's the worst that could happen? You're replaced in an afternoon. Pump Plane, quality 5, defensive 3, with 3 attacks from the crew, bombing run, fast flying, and tough 6 for 120 points. Now, I didn't know what they were looking for with a unit name called Pump a Plane. Pump a Plane. Pump a paw. Pump a pump a paw. Pump Plane. But it has the bombing run, so you can fly over stuff. It's fast flying, so again, fly over stuff, drop bombs. Uh, 120 points, a little steep, I think, for that. It's probably not going to be worth it when you're building the army. But if you want to have an army that's just ridiculous, sure, throw some goblin biplanes in there, chucking out, you know, balls of filth. I've never been one for all the pump stuff, so meh, might be for you. Your mileage may vary. Again, we're playing goblins. If you're taking this seriously, you're doing it wrong. 
Goblin Artillery. This one was actually pretty hard to find a model for, but I didn't look that hard. So here we got a, a, a catapult. It works. Quality 5, Defensive 5, Crew A3, Scrap Shooter, 18 inches, A6, AP1, with Entrenched, Immobile, and Tough 3. Now, for the options and the upgrades, we can skip all the way down to the Goblin Slingshot. This is the money shot. 24 inches, 1 attack, AP1, Deadly 3, Sniper, and Indirect. It's got Sniper, you're going to hit on a 2. It's got Indirect, you can stand behind stuff. And it's a goblin attached to a slingshot. I'm not even going to talk about the rest of it. Take the goblin slingshot. Period. Enough said. Moving on. So now for our leaders. Goblin leader, quality 5, defensive 5, comes with a hand weapon with 3 attacks. He is hero and tough 3. Now, we've gone through all the upgrades. Instigator, camouflage, magic potions, fear 3, caster 3. You're going to want to have at least one combat guy with a unit of one of your goblins. Doesn't matter if it's foot troops, beast riders... Cave beasts, even. At least take one with magic potions. At that point, it's 55 points. I mean, these guys are so cheap. 55 points to give a squad of maybe 20 goblins with spears AP1. Absolutely worth it. If you got one of them in every unit, even better. At that point, the goblins go from comic relief to, oh, there might be something here. Then we're going to go to replacing the hand weapon, either dual hand weapon, great weapon, halberd, Lance or Spear. Give him whatever the unit is he's attached with. Lance, definitely if he's with the Beast Rider squad. And then anything else you can flavor the taste of whatever unit he's in. You can also take a short bow and a Pet Cave Beast for Warning Cry. And again, he can upgrade with any of the clans, the Cave, the Forest, or the Wolf Clan. And you can give him a Wolf, a Spider, a Cave Beast, a Giant Spotter, or a Great Cave Beast. Which is what the guy over here, Orc King, is doing with these two giant pigs. It's two cave beasts stacked on top of each other. Or you could use that big pig moon meatball tomato thing that we had before. They're goblins. They ain't got to make sense. Now our other option for leaders is the troll boss. Quality four, defensive four with a heavy hand weapon, four attacks, an AP2, hero, regeneration, and toughness six. He has no upgrades as far as what he can do with his units. He is just an additional beat stick to put into a troll unit or to run around by himself. Because trolls don't need this guy, he can run around on his own. You can replace the heavy hand weapon with a heavy great weapon for more AP, take it to AP4. You can give him the ability to throw a stone at somebody for 6 attacks at 12 inches and AP1 with a bash attack. And you can give him the cave breed, which makes him poison and furious. The Forest Breed, which gives him Scout and Strider. Or the Stone Breed, which gives him Defense, Plus One, and Fearless. Choose whichever one you want. If you really want him in the combat fast, I'd say Forest Breed. If you want him to be tanky, Stone Breed. Or if you want a middle of the road between both, Cave Breed. So with that all out of the way, I want to show you guys what I'm going to be using this week for the army that you're going to see. These guys popped up, I think it was Facebook where I saw this. A few weeks ago and I saw this and said oh my god I have to do it again we're not sponsored but just to show you guys this ridiculousness warp miniatures has put out the battle for shroom pass the monopose gnome army and as soon as I saw these I laughed and giggled and then the second picture we got to I saw the slingshot and it clicked oh my god they're goblin analogs so immediately I made an army. Immediately, I, made, I immediately I had to start printing. So that's what we got today. We're going to have gnome goblins. From there, moving on to the army showcase and then the battle report. What's up, everybody? Now we're out in the garage for this week's battle report. This is the goblin army that are not exactly goblins. You can see they're a little bit shorter and probably a little bit angrier than your normal goblins. So uh, we're going to go over the list and then I'll go over the mission. We'll get this rolling. All right, we have we have three squads of 20 warriors, all armed with spears, with clave clan, so they are furious, all led. All three of those are led by a goblin leader who has the magic mushrooms, who gives all of them plus one AP in combat. We have two squads of 10 shooters, 
They're all going to be part of the Forest Clan, so they all have Strider. And one of them is being led by a goblin leader who also has Strider, but he is a caster, so he's going to be shilling out some magic mushrooms, making people see some odd stuff. We have three trolls in the army, all of them armed with heavy hand weapons for AP3, and they all have the Stone Breed, so they are fearless with plus one defense. Apparently we got some extra juiced up badgers. Then we have a unit of 10 Beast Riders. I can't fit them all on the spinny thing at once. But 10 Beast Riders all on cave beasts with lances. And they're being led by a goblin leader with a lance and the army standard bearer, which is the polka dotted underpants you can see there giving the unit Fear 3. Then last but certainly not least, we have our Goblin Artillery, who this time is a slingshot, who's going to be bombarding the enemy with a sniper rule. Apparently there's nothing like flying angry gnomes. Then returning this week to be the opponents are the Duchies of Vinci. In our scenario today, the gnomes set off on a daring mission to do a panty raid on one of the duchesses. They seem to have been able to take a pair of her black undergarments and ran off into the woods. After the little gnome was spooked by something, they were dropped. Now the armies of the duchies have gone out to retrieve the underwear, and the gnomes are desperate to get it back to add to their underpants collection. This will be the standard deployment, but for our scenario today, it will be a moving objective. Whenever a unit activates and moves onto the objective, if it is not contested by anyone else, they will grab a hold of it and keep it in their unit. Whenever a unit carrying the objective fails a morale test, it is dropped. We're going to go four rounds, and we're going to see who ends up with possession of the Duchess's underwear. All right, we're adjusting the camera to the other side of the table just because it looks better to me. All the lines are set up. All the heavy units of both armies seem that they are going to try to converge on the underwear. We're going to see if the tenacity of the underpants gnomes can win out against the firepower of the duchies. Roll to see who goes first. Duchies get a four. Goblins get a six. Goblins start off turn one. First turn of move one, the trolls move flat out and secure the underwear. Can their added defense from being stone trolls win out? First activation for the duchies. The brutes move forward and fire their heavy crossbows into the trolls. Even through their regeneration, the rending weapons do three wounds and take one of them down. The gnome's catapult fires and unfortunately rolls a one to hit. We don't know where that gnome went, but he's definitely a greasy spot somewhere on the battlefield. With the heavy underbrush in the way, the heavy cavalry is just out of range to charge, so they move flat out ahead, daring the goblins to come attack them. The gnome shaman casts Sneaky. And rolls a six, meaning that the two spear warrior units in front of him are going to get a plus three, plus six next time they move. The gnome shooter squad around the shaman shuffle forward to make sure everyone gets within 18 inches and fires at the heavy cab. Even though they only hit on a five, they score multiple hits, causing the heavy cab members to lose two wounds. The unit of city guard move forward and level their crossbows at the unit of gnome shooters. After their crossbow bolts fly, they skewer three of the little buggers. One of the units of gnome warriors, with their sneaky powers, giving them plus six inches to their charge, given to them by the shaman, charge forward at blistering pace, catching the heavy cavalry completely unaware. Under a mountain of attacks from the little buggers, they're able to score no less than five wounds on the heavy cavalry. Their heavy armor just not able to deal with that many hits. Being caught completely flat-footed, the remaining heavy cavalry member fights back and only kills off one goblin. But he luckily passes his morale test. The Ottawa Guard move forward and fire off their hand crossbows into the squad of gnome warriors that is charged forward, and they're able to kill off four of them. The second squad of speedy gnomes with no real target to charge this turn 
move forward to screen out the trolls that are holding the sacred underpants objective. The Automa drones move forward and fire off a hail of crossbow bolts into the speedy squad that just appeared in front of them. And they're able to kill off five of the little stinky angry things. The beast riders are only able to roll a one on their boing roll, meaning that they will be one and short of charging into the unit of city guard. The final unit of city guard move forward and fire through the cover into the gnomes that are attacking the heavy cavalry. Even taking the cover into account, they're able to kill off five of the goblins, forcing them to take a morale check. And the goblins' biggest weakness is morale. They immediately fail and they are pinned. The last unit of gnome warriors moves forward. With nothing in charge range this turn, they move behind the trolls to support. The Vinci leader on Mechanical Chicken charges forward in the gap left, ramming into the squad in combat with the heavy cavalry. He's able to kill six on the charge. The goblins do nothing back. And because they're already pinned, they all run away screaming. Last activation of turn one, the final unit of gnome shooters fires at the Automa drones, and they're able to, with their short bows, gum up two of the rotors, and they go crashing to the ground. Seeing no real good option in the center of the board, the Vinci leader charges with the mechanical chicken into the trolls trying to save the underpants. He crashes in, but with the trolls' high defense and regeneration, only two wounds are able to go through. The trolls attack back, doing three wounds to the leader, who passes his morale test. The gnome leader on Beast and the Beast Rider squad charge and smash into the city guard unit right in front of them. Lances only do three wounds. But the vicious jaws of their cave beasts do an additional six, killing nine of the city guard. The lone remaining city guard attacks back, completely missing, and then runs screaming off the battlefield. The unit of Automa Guard move forward into the center of the field and level their crossbows at one of the units of gnome warriors behind the trolls. They're able to spear five of them with their crossbow bolts. Our second brave gnome steps into the slingshot and gets fired across the battlefield at the heavy cavalry that's still remaining. It nails the side of the heavy cavalry, but his heavy armor does not care whatsoever and wonders why there is liquid gnome running down the flanks of his boar. The heavy cavalry member seeing the writing is on the wall, charges into the trolls, smashing into them, killing the one that was on one wound with his impact hits alone, then causing two more wounds to the other. The lone troll attacks back and completely misses, then fails his morale test and his fearless check, runs off the board. Then the heavy cavalry member reaches down and grabs the Duchess's holy underpants. With stunning fury, the depleted squad of gnome warriors charges into the heavy cavalry member who was just seen picking up their prized underpants. They must be really motivated because they are able to come up with five furious hits. Even after that, the heavy cavalry only failed just enough armor saves to lay him low. Then the goblin leader in that squad picks up the underpants. The Automa drones round the corner and fire on the squad that just picked up the underpants. Their crossbows blaring away. They're able to kill an additional five. Once they realize they were under attack, the gnomes failed their morale test throwing the underpants into the air to land on the field next to them. The gnome shaman and his squad of shooters move forward. The shaman finds himself out of range to cast any offensive spells. The shooter squad fires the mechanical chicken. They're able to do one wound. The squad of city guard left on the flank move towards the center and fire at the unmolested squad of gnome warriors. Their crossbow bolts fly, and between good aim and bad luck on the goblin's part, they're able to kill off nine. The Gnome Warrior unit that was just shot charged into the mechanical chicken because nothing else seems to be in range. They seem to forget what they're doing as they're only able to cause two hits. But out of those two hits, one of them does cause a wound. The leader on the chicken fights back and is able to kill one of the gnomes. Combat ends up tied. The Brutes charge into the unit that is attacking their leader. Between all their lance hits, they're able to kill off five of the gnomes. Gnomes strike back, doing no damage whatsoever, and then being cowardly little things, they run off the field screaming. It might come to the shooters to grab the underwear off the floor. They move forward, 
and fire their short bows into the Automa drones, and they're able to drop one of them. In his quest to secure his lady's undergarments, the Vinci leader charges into the squad of gnome warriors. The gnome warriors raise their spear points. And through a comical dice combination, they're able to take the last four wounds off of the mechanical chicken, causing it to explode right in their faces. The slingshot takes aim at the brutes. Now let's go another flying gnome. Only to roll another one, meaning that gnome is going to land who knows where. The Automa brutes charge into the squad of warriors that had just killed their captain. The gnomes were trying to recreate what they just did and raise their spear points, only for them to smash on the heavy armor of the brutes. The brutes then absolutely massacre the little things. The gnome shooters right in the middle of the action fire off at the drones again, and again dropping one of them. The Automa Guard move forward and grab the underpants and fire at the gnome shooters. They're able to kill four of them, and then the shooters fail the morale test and are pinned. The Gnome Shaman cast Curse onto the unit of Automa Guard, causing a blast of nine to hit them. The Guard lose six in the blast, who then fail their morale test and lose an additional one to the Automa Rule. The Gnome Shooters then turn and fire into the City Guard. They must be very motivated to sniff those underpants because they cause five hits and kill four of the Guard. The Automa Drones move forward to cover the Guard and fire into the Beast Riders killing off two of the giant toads. The Beast Riders, getting a six on their Boeing roll, are able to clear the terrain far enough to charge into the Brutes. In the charge, they're able to do five wounds, killing off one of the Brutes and wounding another. The Brutes then turn to attack, only hitting twice, but the Beast Riders' armor holds. Because of losing combat and because of the scary banner, the Brutes have to make an automa test as they fail their morale test, causing the wounded Brute to crumple into a pile of gears. The last unit for the duchies has turned the city guard round the corner and fire on the beast riders. Their aim all seems to be true as they kill off six of the beast riders who then immediately fail their morale test. The gnome shaman again casts curse, this time getting it off with a five at the city guard. It takes out five of them who then fail their morale test. The shooters then move and fire at the Automa Guard holding the underpants, killing one of them with their shots, causing the Automa to take a morale test and fail. Then the two additional Automa roll ones on their Automa check and crumple to the ground. The underpants are back in play. The Brute charges into the squad of Beast Riders that are left there. And in his initial charge, he kills two of them. The leader attacks back, causing one wound. Because of the army standard causing fear three, the leader carrying it wins combat, and the brute passes his morale test. The gnome slingshot pulls backwards, last shot of the game. Letting loose, the flying dwarf guides himself expertly into the brute and slams home. Whee! The brute fails his armor save, but he has regeneration, and he fails two out of the three damage, causing the brute to explode in a cloud of gears, metal, and gnome. The Automa drones move forward and snatch the underpants up off the ground. They then choose to split their fire, three of them firing at the leader on the beast and three of them firing at the squad of shooters that is still pinned. The three firing at the beast leader causes two wounds, leaving him on one remaining, and the three of them firing at the shooters are able to wipe the squad off the map. And that's the end of the game, everybody. On turn number four, the little Automa drones were able to reach down with their little robot fingers and picking up the mud-encrusted and probably shredded underpants off the ground. The gnomes failed in their panty raid. So that was a whole lot of fun. You guys got to see how the gnomes slash goblin army works. It seems to be that a lot of their units are glass cannons. They get a whole bunch of attacks because the units are pretty big that you can buff up with extra AP. The Beast Riders, especially whenever they charge with Lance, that's really nice when you take squad a ton of them. They definitely ram home whenever they do hit. And then 20 Spearmen, 20 Spear Goblins, with a guy who gives them AP1, just with a counter, is nothing really to sneeze at. Even the most heavily armored stuff kind of raises an eyebrow at that. 
going, if I'm going to charge you, I'm going to I'm going to get swung at 20 times before I get to do anything. It wasn't the most competitive goblin list in the world, but it was a fun one. Especially because I got to use the little the little gnomes for the goblins. That just goes to show you that being model agnostic OPR is open to a whole bunch of models that you probably never thought you could use. So that'll do it today for the Garage's Battle Report. Remember to like, subscribe, share this with your friends. Leave a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know what you guys want to see next. And then also we have a poll going right now to see who's going to be playing next week. The Dutchies are going to be moving on to the next round to fight against whoever wins in that poll between Mummified Undead, War Disciples, Halflings, and Wood Elves. So go ahead and make your choice. Let me know what you guys want to see. So until next time, this has been War Boss Fitz. I'll catch you later.